song, welcome those who are with us online. Our service continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You're invited to be seated. Our readings are found in our bulletin. A reading from Job. There was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came along among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin. All that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he is in your power. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. 
Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But she said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. The word of the Lord. A reading from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now, God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Some Pharisees came, and to test him, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus said to them, Let the little children come to me. These are difficult passages to preach from. Just I'll take a little tangent here. I remember when I was in my first calling and uh, I was looking for a vacation and we scheduled it on the calendar. And I had an intern, so I had sort of had the luxury of a built-in preacher at that time. And so I said, you preach, and it was, happened to be the first Sunday in October. About Thursday, he came to me and he said, Father, these are really hard passages to preach from for the first time. <laughs> I was so sad when I actually took time to look and see what I assigned him. They are difficult passages to preach from. I will do my very best to handle them faithfully and also with the grace that I understand God gives to us. There are some truths we live with in the 21st century that we just sort of take as eternal truths. If you obey your parents, you'll get what you want. That was how I started out with just one of those thoughts. Or, if you study hard, you will get good grades. Or, if you go to the right college, you'll get a good job. Or, if you work hard at that job, you'll get a raise. Then, in adulthood, if you keep the right circle, you'll advance in society. Or, if you keep a good reputation, you will get the spouse of your choice. Or, if you stay faithful, others will stay faithful to you. Or, 
If you do what is right, you will succeed. And if all else fails, if you keep trying and trying again, then you will succeed. These are all true except when they're not. The exception to the truths above is what our texts speak to today. We try to live our best and to be a person of integrity. That's what we chanted in our psalm today. Give justice for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted the Lord. I have not faltered. Living with integrity is possible most of the time. People normally respond to our good works positively. However, there are times of exceptions. We're familiar with the exceptions if we have lived any length of time. Parents are not always the most healthy of people, and sometimes parents make terrible decisions and do some things that are really terrible at times. Good education, with all of its promises, doesn't always produce the job we hope for. Hard work is not always rewarding. Maybe most difficultly, spouses, those we love deeply and treasure, are not always honest or trustworthy. And then, spiritually, at times it even seems God has dealt unfairly with us. That's what's exactly happening in the book of Job. Job is a successful man. He falls from the highest of places and accomplishment all the way to the bottom. The story tells us about examples of human suffering all compacted into one short chapter. Financial loss, physical disease, death of family members, all these come crashing into his life. But like us, the ancient readers were overwhelmed with this story. And it's interesting what scholars have found. It's later editors that added the beginning to the book of Job. It is an addition, an edit. Apparently, the ancient readers had a difficult time making sense of the suffering of Job. And so, hundreds of years later, the reading that we had today was added to the text that wasn't originally there. One that talks about Satan or an accuser coming in to the throne room of God and inviting a challenge to God. Truthfully, it's how the Persian court worked back in those days. Someone was an advisor who would find the opposite to be true. The devil's advocate is what we would call it now. But that person was on the team with the king and would say, yeah, but what about this? Do we have enough troops to overcome this other country? And so the scenario is set, yeah, but what about this faithful man? Is he truly faithful or does he just have a lot of stuff? And so he praises you. For our mindset, this doesn't really help. It only muddles the picture even more because it has God giving tacit approval and permission to torment a faithful person. Have you ever felt like that? That's what this book is about. For our 21st mind, century mindset, 
We have to hear God's grace in a different way rather than a Persian court scene. I believe the grace comes from a different place in the dialogue between Job and God. In the midst of his loss, he becomes the exception to the rules that we all seem to understand. And so Job questions God. He accuses God. He second-guesses God. He lashes out in anger towards God. He even professes trust in God, even in unfair circumstances. In all of this, God listens and God loves. God sees Job's faithfulness, even in the midst of him offering angered questions. Questions, confusion, never diminish God's love for us. No matter what we're going through in life, whether it's an unjust reaction to something that should have been true, whether someone has not been faithful to us. God remains faithful even though it appears that God isn't there. Likewise, our questions, our anger, our confusion will never push God away. It will allow us to experience God's grace even more deeply. Our gospel reading tells a very narrow perspective of the message of marriage and divorce. Be assured that other scriptures talk more fully about this. And over time, we've come to see that even in the most committed relationships, over time, the relationship can die even though each of the partners continue to live. The relationship dies. The important thing I think I want to share with you is the important context for today's saying. Immediately following the explanation by Jesus, the rebuke of dismissing the children is introduced. Mark has written it in as a sandwich. The children are rebuked and dismissed. The saying is given. Children are rebuked and dismissed. They're sandwiched in here. As if to say, the disciples are shooing away the most vulnerable and helpless in their society. But Jesus is going to set them straight. He commands the children to come to him. Those who are easily dismissed, put away, abandoned, are vulnerable. And Jesus calls them and welcomes them. To bless them. Maybe the picture we see in our human relationships that is the most painful and the most grieving is when a relationship dies. Know that Jesus understands that. And he calls those who are vulnerable and hurting and welcomes them to come to him to be blessed. He never dismisses. If you've ever been affected by divorce, I can't think of a more powerful image of Jesus welcoming the people who are the most vulnerable, of trust and commitment being given, and Jesus responding with blessing. At times, maybe not in relationships, but in life. We're left vulnerable like a child. Christ invites us in our hurt, in our experience of the world as the exception at times to offer grace and love to those who need grace and love rather than dismissing. Let the little children come to me might mean that we have to bring our pains and our questions to the God that we would want to blame. That will never diminish God 
in the least. God knows our pain, and like a parent, invites the truth of our heart to be shared in its rawest form. Grace is there without exception. Let the children come to me as an invitation to bring our vulnerabilities and our powerlessness to God, where grace is the healing power of broken hearts. Today's lessons tell us about the exceptions of life, those times when life just doesn't deal things correctly. The promises that God's grace is always there, and we are always welcome. stand as we say the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God. God did not make of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people today will be form three found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for the mission agencies and their work throughout the Angl Anglican Communion, for the church in Wales, for the life and ministry of the Diocese of Arkansas, for the ministry of St. John's Parish, and for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, for Presiding Bishop Michael, for our Bishop Larry, for Father Mike, for Tim, and the staff of St. John's Parish, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all politicians who govern, especially President Joe, Governors Asa, Governor Kevin, and Mayor George, and for all who hold authority in the nations of the world. That there be justice and peace on earth. 
Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We ask your prayers for those who are ill, shut in, or for whom we are called to intercede on our parish prayer list. B, George, Chris, Sal, Bill, Debbie, Wanda, Scott, Carl, Carleen, Orland, Dennis, Tim, Jim, Rebecca, Gray, Pat, Ron, Hester, Mike, Malcolm, Roni, Jackie, Andrea, Mike, Larry, Lee, Jim, Catherine, and Davis. We ask your prayers for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and for all those serving our country in the military. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom. Grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son in his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Now, returning to page number 360, as we kneel together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Standing together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. to be seated, and I see Trista has retained a seat in the chancel, so I believe she's coming with our vestry announcements. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome all of you to St. John's this morning, parishioners, visitors, online and in person. I just have a few quick announcements. Um, Father Jeff is going to be starting a study group next Sunday, I believe, over Samuel and Kings. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. Also, today, this afternoon, at uh, 3 o'clock at St. Bartholomew's, there will be a blessing of the animals for the Feast of St. Francis. And what better way to celebrate than by getting a new cat? So... <laughs> We, if you do not know, there is a lovely neighborhood cat that lives at the Oxford House that has 
taken the word of be fruitful and multiply to heart. <laughs> so we have so far, uh, I believe, five or six cats that we've caught. I believe uh, Becky's already found a home for one of them. Um, but there's going to be more to come because we still have to catch some because they're wild right now. But we have some available, all different colors, male and female. So, and they will be spayed or neutered. Um, so if you're interested in that, please contact Becky. And um, I believe that is all I have today. So have a great day. Enjoy the weather. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. And since we've had Rally Day in early September, and we've been trying to focus on some of the different places where we do ministry in our work here at St. John's, one of the connections we have is with the Community Rescue Mission, and we have a board member, uh, Grant Purdy, who uh, I, I asked him if he would be able to share some things about the ministry that's happening there, the connection that we have. And, I would invite Grant if you would come and share with us a little bit the work and the ministry that we're able to do here at St. John's in cooperation with our with uh, community rescue mission. Right, thanks, Father Mark. I've been on the vestry and also I sit on the community rescue mission board. This is my second year for that, and I'd just like to tell you a little bit about the goals and the work of the mission. I'm sure most people have heard of it, but you know, it's helpful to hear some of the details about that. St. John's partners with the Community Rescue Mission with a lot of other downtown churches. They're located at 310 North F Street, and if you're familiar with where the sack lunch program is now, they have the Community Rescue Mission offices in the same building as the sack lunch. Across the street from that are the residential areas, their kitchen, their meeting hall, and their chapel. And what's nice is that the Community Rescue Mission gives a lease to the sack lunch at very favorable terms, so we're happy for that. The Community Rescue Mission is a nonprofit, faith-based Christian organization that provides safe shelter meals and needed support to help people get back on their feet as quickly as possible. They opened in 1981, and they were founded by the Bob Miller and the John Grimm families. And their focus now, because of the uh, Hope Campus that opened, is women and young children. There are a few men that fit in that category with their families that are there, but mainly women and children. And they provide a lot more than just a place to stay and hot meals. Their goal is to get people back to society and being, having jobs in a permanent residence within six months. And some of the other things that they offer, they offer life skill classes, parenting, family budgeting, job interview skills. They provide transportation to school, to doctors, to jobs. And they provide chapel services to the residents who have to uh, donate their time and they have duties and obligations to help run the mission. I want to give you some of their statistics and some of the things that they've been able to accomplish for this year. 2021, these numbers are through August. So January through August of this year, 313 individuals have checked into the mission, uh, 35 men, 117 women, and 161 children have gone through, the, been checked into the mission during this time frame. There have been over 6,000 um, nights of stay at the mission so far this year, and they've served over 11,000 meals. They've helped 44 individuals get permanent jobs and helped 34 people get permanent housing. It's important to understand that because this is a faith-based Christian organization, the mission receives zero money from city, state, federal, or any governmental entity. And they do not receive any funding from the United Way. They're completely supported by donations and support mainly from local churches like St. John's. Recently, their kitchen and their dining hall are being renovated. And Heather Sanders, their director, wanted me to realize she's so grateful because St. John's were allowing them to use our kitchen every Tuesday to help prepare some of their meals. They've also recently started phase two construction on some private apartment residences for the mission. Currently, they're in more of like a sort of a bunkhouse situation where all the rooms are connected and there's very little privacy. 
Let's see, St. John's is providing dinner for them this coming Friday, October the 15th. I'm delivering pizza and salad. They also send out requests. You may have seen, I leave notes in our online newsletters, in our printed newsletter. They have wish lists for really basic living needs for their residents, diapers, toiletries, office supplies, shampoo, things like that, cleaning supplies for the mission. They also ask for volunteers from time to time, answer the phones, help people drive. They have a van to appointments. Babysitting is needed during their life school classes. I'll keep putting these updates in our newsletters. Please look for those. You can donate your items and people who've done that, we appreciate it, at the church offices. When these come out, you can also, of course, deliver uh, or have direct donations. And I know that uh, you know, we have the sack lunch program that we just had the uh, sack lunch Sunday and there are other areas that are deserving of your charity dollars. I'm going to put this basket in the back of our church. Every little bit helps. And I go and if you want to give money, I'll buy the materials that they need. There's certain diapers, that they, sizes that they need from time to time that changes. The Community Risk Commission is also having a couple of fundraisers that are coming up and I'll keep you updated on those. There's a pickleball tournament that's coming up, so please, if you like playing pickleball, sign up for that. There's also going to be a golf tournament and we'll hear more about those. I believe those are coming out either later this year or in the spring. You can go to their website as well, fscrm.org. And you can check out, it really inspires me, their central message is on the website, Instilling Hope and Empowering Lives. Thanks for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. I might embarrass Grant just a little bit. One of my favorite things that I've seen as he's uh, been a liaison board member is he brought the children over. He, coordinated it with our Book of Book ministry. So Mary Jane and the Book of Book ministry will often get children's books. And he brought them over and he and he and Mary Jane were there in our parish hall where the little children's area is. And they said, you get to take home, I think they gave each kid three books that they could have. And one of the children said, that I can keep forever said, yeah, this is your book. And it, was, it was amazing, amazing stuff. Kids just don't even have books when your parents don't have money to pay rent. And so it's beautiful stuff that we're doing here at St. John's. I'm so, I am so proud of this parish. It has a heart to be able to reach out to people who are in need. And God bless you guys for being a part of this amazing, amazing parish. So thank you all. Ah, offertory sentence. Let us offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. Standing together, we pray the great thanksgiving, Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Peace of God that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God the Father and the Son Jesus Christ. For the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you all. Amen.